don't do what Nick does. All right, so today is rear sprocket day on the Mark V hybrid project. Now, I've been putting this off because I just don't want to have to deal with installing yet another rag joint over a coaster brake arm. I've always had to bend the coaster brake arm out and it's just been an absolute nightmare. But I have seen this trick where instead of using uh, the two rag joints, you just use the one on the inside of the rim and have uh, the sprocket hard up against the spokes. Uh, this is supposed to prevent the necessity for bending the coaster brake arm, but what this process also has the risk of doing is not clearing the tire. So as we see, there's our, if we can get right in there, there's our coaster brake arm. Now, there is not a lot of clearance between where the coaster brake arm sits and where the sprocket and rag joint would sit. So what we're hoping for is that uh, it will sit over this dust cover and the bolts will clear that arm. So I've got everything I need for this install, which is obviously the sprocket, the one single rag joint to go on the inside, nine bolts and assorted 10 mil spanners and sprocket. Of course, a 15 to remove the wheel. So we're really not going to know how this is going to work out until we get started. All right, so I don't intend on filming the entire process of me putting on the rag joint because it'll be an hour of me cussing and swearing and carrying on. Uh, but what I'll do is basically a highlights reel if I see something relevant, I'll hit record and uh, we'll do it that way uh, because the rag joint is the hardest part of a motorized bike install. I found it to be the most reliable. I have used a hub adapter and that destroyed half a dozen spokes on my wheel. The rag joint is a pain in the bum, but it's worth it in the long haul, in my opinion. And I've only built, you know, or a five of these bikes, but I've had less issue with a rag joint than with a hub adapter, so rag joint wins. The wheel's off, and the bike is precariously balanced in the long grass, resting up some loose house planks. Don't do what Nick does. So, of course, we still need to remove the coaster brake arm to put the sprocket on because not in a million years are you going to be able to just slide it on like that it, it just doesn't work so we do have to remove this nut now what you want to be careful is not rotating uh, the coaster brake arm because you have a chance of loosening the cup and bearings and the cone, whatever you want to call it, inside there, and that will muck up your wheel. And that is the mistake I made with the Mark IV bike, which is hiding in there in pieces with no rear wheel. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and remove this. I have heard a buzzing coming from in here. There is a wasp nesting inside the handlebars of the Mark II. If you find a wasp in your handlebars, don't do what Nick does. That should keep the little bugger inside there for now anyway. But I wouldn't ride it like that. All right, so coaster brake arm is off, but this does not fit over the dust cover. Now I've got two options here. I can remove the dust cover and risk exposing all of that to mud, grime, dirt, and nasty stuff. Or I can go find the sprocket that I originally ground out for the Mark IV to fit over the massive Nexus three-speed hub dust cover. 
which rather than ever grind out one of these again, I'm gonna go find that and we'll get to work. Had a little panic. Oh crap, I've lost an entire sprocket. Turns out I've already used it. This is the 20 inch from uh, the Mark III. It's Boxing Day, people are celebrating. They're a bit loud. All right, so I've got to go ahead and pull this one off and it should be good to go uh, on our build. I mean, obviously it fits over. All right, so that's on. We get plenty of clearance there, but not I don't think the chain is going to clear the tire. So I've only got three bolts in there at the moment. Just in the middle of every little crescent plate there. Now I did that just because I want before I go too far to just see what kind of clearance we're actually getting. And it looks tight, but we're gonna throw a chain on there and just see if we can estimate what it's gonna look like. I think we might just get away with that. Yes, that gonna get away with that. Can I shut that? It's dirty hands. Dirty hands indeed. Cool, Dad. It might rub on the tire a little bit. But I don't know, I think we might get away with that. Now, remembering that the engine isn't actually tightly bolted down yet, so we've got a bit of wiggle room in the angle there, it will most likely rub the wheel at some point or another. But I think that the wheel, again, the wheel's only finger tight, not lined up properly either. And obviously this chain is too short uh, for this frame as well. Um, but I think that's looking pretty good to me and I'm happy to move forward uh, with the build. So I'll go ahead and finish up that rag joint and uh, worst case scenario is I'll pull it all apart and start again. Uh, but this alignment does look close, but then again, it always is. But uh, we'll, we'll pull that wheel back off and uh, finish bolting our rag joint together. Rag joint is on. So I've got the sprocket on the rear now. Very next thing to do is to sort out all the controls on these handlebars. Uh, but that'll be in the next video because uh, I've got some uh, few special plans for what I need to do up there. Uh, so pretty happy with the way that's balanced. Uh, I won't know for sure about the chain clearance until of course I get the clutch cable mounted and I can stick a chain on. Uh, at which point we'll go ahead and tighten up all of the engine bolts. Uh, but we're very, getting very close to firing it up. But uh, yeah, like I say, that won't be till the next video because I expect this one's already going to drag on for about 20 minutes or so. Uh, we'll see how well I do at trimming it down.